This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of NRE Secrets, I'm going to discuss deafness in dogs, the signs, the causes, and more importantly, how to live with a deaf dog. Hello once again and welcome to my new video on living with a deaf dog. I wanted to start this video with myself and Lewis. For Lewis is now deaf, and I've learned a number of different things, how to adapt, to live well with the deaf dog. The no there's a number of different specific training tips that I'm going to go throughout this video, so you're going to see how. Um, and little simple different life changes that you can incorporate to one, make it easy to live with the deaf dog, safe and enjoyable for both you and himself too. Um, Lewis here, I mean, as a matter of seeing how deaf he is, I mean, we can, I can raise my voice right now, call his name, and he's not even going to move. Lewis, come! He, he has no real sense. He, the only thing he can really respond to now is a really a high, high pitch whistle. If I'm not too far away, he'll turn his head for that. Uh, or we're going to sort of, I can bang on the wall, the floor, and then he can feel those vibrations. But beyond that, he's really completely deaf. Um, so all these different techniques I'm going to discuss Next in the video I'm using, they've been very helpful. Deafness in dogs. It can be complete or partial. If your dog is deaf at birth, it's called congenital. There are 30 breeds of dogs that have a known susceptibility for deafness, including the Australian Shepherd, Boston Terrier, Cocker Spaniel, Dalmatian, German Shepherd, Jack Russell Terriers, Maltese, Toy Miniature Poodles, and West Highland White Terriers. It's much more common, obviously, in our senior dogs. Some of the symptoms, your dog will stop responding to their name, appearing not to listen. There can be difficulty waking them up, even with a loud noise. Be they become unresponsive to common sounds, you know, such as the sounds of a squeaky toy. My last dog, Jesse, who recently died, he had many of these common symptoms. The causes are varied. No question most common is degenerative age-related changes um, that is seen in elderly dogs. There can be tumors or cancer involving the nerves used for hearing. There's inflammatory and infectious diseases, you know, such as that with canine distemper virus. Antibiotics, such as the antibiotic Gentison, which is found in this very common ear medication, Automax. So a big point with that is if your dog is being treated with Automax for an ear infection, you want to have made sure first that your veterinarian is thorough, thoroughly examining your dog's ear, made sure that the eardrum is still intact, so none of that antibiotic can go through the eardrum, affecting your dog's ear nerve, causing deafness. Antiseptics, a common one such as chlorhexidine, some of the chemotherapy drugs, diuretics, heavy metals such as arsenic, lead, or mercury, and there's other risk factors. These long-term recurring ear infections can lead to deafness in dogs that have white coat color. So what can you do? And I've gone through this exact experience because my dog Lewis is deaf. First, you need to learn to communicate. You need to learn a new language. American Sign Language or signs that you invent yourself. But fortunately, your dog is going to quickly adapt. Your dog is learning signs and facial, and, and facial expressions instead of words. The first signs are those that you were taught in puppy classes. You know, sit, come, stay, lay down, stop. And you're going to use hand signals, either ones that you've learned from puppy class, and that's what I did with my own dog, Lewis, and, and he's responded so well to that. The leash question. Clearly, it's safer to be leashed most of the time, but especially near roads. Your dogs just, just can't hear anymore. Um, get your dog a new tag um, with specific ID on it, including your phone number, but also informing people that do find them that your dog is deaf. Bells. A bell is a great way to hear where your dog is, especially if he's something like he's off leash in the woods. And Lewis has that often. I let him off leash in the woods above my house, and I like to know where it is. Deaf dogs are easily startled, and most people that have never had a deaf dog don't realize this. So you have to start out slowly. You've got to learn to desensitize a deaf dog, starting by gently touching him, then giving him a treat. It really goes back to basic training and positive reinforcement. For my dog, Lewis, to wake him up easy and not startle him, I always lightly stroke his shoulder or his back, and now he lifts his head and he makes eye contact. He's lost the hearing cues, so you need to wake your dog up differently but in the same repeated manner. Getting your deaf dog's attention when they're not looking at you. One, you can wait until he turns around. 
with Lewis, he'll go outside to go to the bathroom. I want him to come back in. I'll yell his name. He doesn't hear, of course. Um, but I can bang on the side of the house and he can feel that vibration on the floor and he'll often turn his head. So they can still feel vibrations as you're walking on the floor if you bang on the wall. Lewis still re responds to a really high, high pitched whistle, whistle if he's not too far away, so I'll often do that. You can sometimes turn the lights off and on and then they'll wake up or respond to that. And just gently go up behind him and blow into his ear. Letting your dog know where you are. So one last slide. Then in your house, you always want to let your deaf dog know what you're doing. My dog Lewis, for instance, he would wake up and he'd start pacing around the house. He wants to know where where I was. He was very anxious. It may be as simple though as just a small touch of your dog. He gets a little bit of eye contact. He sees you leave a room, you leaving the room. Then he knows where you are. Thank you once again for watching the video on how to live with a deaf dog. I hope you found it helpful. What I want you to do now is first click that link in the box above. You can subscribe to my channel if you've yet to do so. Then after that, you can click that link in the box below and I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies.